Welcome to the Collect the Coins Challenge. In this challenge, you are going to make the cat controlled by the arrow keys again and go around and collect coins. When you get to a coin, it disappears and shows up in a new place randomly on the screen. You can also, for a bonus, have it keep score. All right, if you think you can do this challenge yourself, jump into Scratch, go for it. If you feel you need help, stay tuned for some hints. You can also come back and watch the hints later. All right, before I create a new project, I want to show you something called the backpack. If I click on this backpack, I can drag a sprite down here. I'm going to drag this Scratch Cat to use my new project. It's a way of getting sprites between projects. So I'm going to make a new project. And I can drag this in. Delete my original cat. And here I have all my code that makes the cat controlled with the arrow keys. And that's the first part of this challenge. Now we're going to talk about the coins. All right, now I'm going to make the coin. I'm going to come down here, click on paint. Choose the circle tool. Make sure it's selected, move it to the middle. Change it to yellow, like a yellow gold. Perfect. Click on it again to select it. If you can't select it, make sure you click on the mouse tool to select it. Then choose the outline and say no outline by clicking on this red line. And now I have my coin. Looks nice. All right, so let's talk about this before we start coding. The cat is in charge of walking around and collecting coins. So we need to detect if the cat touches the coin. It's probably what you're thinking. You're thinking, all right, the cat, active one, it should detect whether it's touching the coin or not. However, we're going to have multiple coins. And in this case, it's actually much easier to have the coin detect if it's touching the cat. And you'll see why in a sec. So what I'm going to do is use an if statement. Say if touching, set a mouse pointer, I'm going to change it to right to, which is the cat. And there's a block called hide. So it hide. Remember, you have to check this if over and over again. So the block that does that is the forever block. And I'm going to connect it all with a green flag. All right, click the green flag. Perfect, it disappeared. Great, works exactly the way I want. But when I click the green flag, it doesn't come back. So what's the opposite of hide? Show. And where do I put this? So in between the green flag and forever it's something I only want happening once at the beginning and not repeated over and over again in the forever. So click the green flag and there it goes. One other thing I want to change is you notice it appears in the same spot every time. I want it to go to a random spot and then show. So see this go to block, random position? I'm going to put it in between the green flag and the show block. So now when I click the green flag, it goes to a random position each time. And I can collect the coin. Let's say after I collect the coin, I want to hide, then I want to show up in a new random spot. So what I'm gonna do is after I hide, I can put multiple blocks in this if statement. So after I hide, I'm gonna have it wait one second, then I'm gonna have it go to a random position, and then Show, and the order is important here. I'm having it wait, then go to random position, and then show. I'm not having it show first, and then go to random position. Now, you've created an endless game. However, only one coin can show up at the screen at once. What if I want multiple coins? Well, the reason we put all this logic inside the coin sprite instead of the cat sprite 
is now I can right click on the sprite and duplicate it. And now I have multiple coins in my game. And I didn't have to add any other code to the cat. If we had put the code in the cat, the cat would have to wait and detect every single coin and be a lot more complicated. So it's really important when you're designing games and coding to figure out which sprite should do the detection and which code should go in each sprite. And the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. I want to show you one other thing for a bonus, how to keep score. And the way to do that is with variables. And variables are extremely powerful. Basically, they store information. And we're going to use it in a very simple way as score. Variables, sort of like if statements, are a foundation of coding and vital to understand to make a complicated game. So I'm going to say make a variable and I'm going to call it score. You notice it says for all sprites or for only the sprite. For this one, we're going to say for all sprites. And it automatically shows up here under score. I can uncheck it so it doesn't show if, if I don't want to. In this case, I want to. And these new blocks come up. So the first thing I want to do is set the score to zero when I click the green flag. Now, which sprite I, should I do this in? I could do it in the coins or I could do it in the cat. But there are going to be multiple coins and I won't know which one. So I'm going to do it in the cat. It makes sense to me that the cat should control the game. So I'm going to set the score to zero for the forever in between the green flag and forever. But in the sprite, that's the coin, that's where I'm going to change the score. Because I'm already detecting if the coin touches the cat. I don't need to detect it a second time. I'm already doing it. And there's this change my variable by one. And I'm going to change that to change score by one. And where do I put it? I put it in right before the hive. Now, because I've already duplicated this coin, I have to add it to my second coin as well. That's why if you're going to duplicate a sprite, it's really important to get that first one right and then duplicate it as many times as you want. See, I can duplicate it a third time now and would have to update that. So now, keep score. All right, that's how you make a collect the coins game. You could add something else to it, like have it wait a random amount of time before it shows up again. And you can add other complexities to it. Whatever you do, have fun with it. Put it in a maze. Put some evil coins that if you touch the evil coin, your score goes down. Whatever you want to do. Good luck and keep on scratching.